Hey everyone, it's Rachel. Today I'm going to answer the most asked question that I get on my channel. How do I record my guitar videos? All guitar cover videos consist of two primary components, the audio and the video. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I record both the audio and the video and edit both and combine them together. I want to start out by saying that I'm not an expert in either video or audio recording, especially in the mixing and mastering aspect of recording guitar audio. I've only been doing this for a little bit of time, but I know that starting out, I would have liked to see a guide like this to show me how to get started recording videos. I'm hoping that this video will be useful to some of you who are looking to start making your own guitar cover videos or just guitar videos in general. In this video, I'm focusing on electric guitar covers. I have not had experience recording acoustic ones. And with that, let's get into it. So to start out, the number one thing you need for good sound quality in your videos is an audio interface. An audio interface will allow you to get your signal from your guitar directly onto your computer. You could also start out by just recording with a microphone that you have, but the sound quality will be a lot worse. But I wouldn't let that stop you if you just want to get started recording videos, you could just record a video of you playing next to your amp. For my audio interface, I actually use my amp, the Yamaha THR10, which is over there. The Yamaha THR10 is both a really great practice headphone amp and also a great way to get started recording. It outputs both a dry and wet signal. The dry signal is the direct sound your guitar is outputting without any effects, and the wet signal has the effects that the amp is providing. So the Yamaha THR10 has a bunch of different settings, a bunch of different built-in effects, and you can actually record those effects onto your computer as well. My recording process with the Yamaha THR10 has changed over time. Up until around six months ago, I was recording the sound directly from the amp, so I was only using the effects and amp models that the amp provided. I'm sure there are also other audio interfaces and amps that you can do similar things with where you can record the effects directly from the interface. But my only experience so far is with the THR10. I'll have a link in the description to the Yamaha THR10 if you're interested in checking it out for yourself. And of course, if you don't need the THR10, any audio interface will do. However, you won't be able to do this direct recording method without having an audio interface like the THR10 that has built-in effects that can be recorded. But really any audio interface will get you going with recording guitar. So now let me just walk you through my initial really simple recording process with the Yamaha THR10. So when I first started out, my recording process was pretty simple. I downloaded Audacity, which is a free audio editing program, and I was able to record directly from my Yamaha THR10, including all the sound effects that are already applied from it, into Audacity, and it was really simple and quick. Now to do this, you'll probably want some sort of interface that has effects already applied, like the Yamaha THR10, but it is really simple and easy to get started. So all I would have to do is select the input here to be my THR10, and then I can just hit the record button and record something. So let's try and record something. So that was pretty simple. As you can see, I recorded what I just played and it has all the effects as I played it. To record a covered video, I also would obviously have a backing track, so you could just create a new track here. And you can put it in your backing track audio, so you can just play over on top of the backing track audio. Now, while this is a very simple way of recording, you just hook up your amp or interface you hit record and you're pretty much done. It has all the effects done. You can't edit the audio signal that much after you record it. So it doesn't allow a lot of flexibility in recording. Audacity also is a little bit harder to work with for more full featured guitar editing. I know for me, at least it would start lagging after I was trying to record a more complicated song with lots of guitar parts. And I really just wanted more flexibility with my sound and more flexibility after I recorded to be able to change the sound of the guitar. So I did a little research and I learned about DAWs, or Digital Audio Workstations. These are more full featured, more fleshed out for full song audio editing, and I think that's where I'd recommend going if you're looking for more control over what you're doing. The DAW I use is called Reaper, and I'll link to that and everything else I mentioned in this video in the description. Reaper is free to try out, and you can try it for as long as you'd like. If you want to buy it then, it's $60. Reaper allows a lot more flexibility and control over your recording once you figure out how to use it. So this is Reaper, and in Reaper, what you'll want to do first is find your audio interface. So under Preferences, you can then go to Device, and you'll want to look under ASIO, probably. At least that's how it works for me. Then you can choose your driver. So for me, I'm using my Yamaha THR10, which uses the Yamaha Steinberg USB ASIO. 
And then you want to set up your inputs. So for me, I have the direct input one, direct input two, and I'm playing out through the amp. So now that you have your device selected, whatever your audio interface is, you can get into recording. And now to get started, what you'll want to do is add a new track. So you can insert a new track right there. And then you want to select your inputs to make sure that you have the right device selected. So for me, that is the Yamaha 2TR10. So I'd select the direct input one and direct input two, which records from my amp. So the direct output of my amp, the dry signal, not the wet signal, which includes the effects. Now, if I were to start playing at this point, I wouldn't hear anything. No sound, nothing is coming out of this, even though I've set up the inputs correctly. So what you want to do in order to be able to hear your guitar is you need to enable recording. So there's a record arm button here that you want to hit. There's also a button called record monitoring, which will be off by default that you want to turn on to be able to hear what you're playing. So you'll want to switch that to on there. And now I can hear the direct output of my guitar, so no effects. <laughs> And if I hit the record button here, I can record the playing guitar audio. So this is great and all, but it's just the plain audio, no effects, nothing on the guitar. And if you're recording a guitar cover video or even just your own original guitar song, it's likely that you'll want effects and not just the plain direct output from your electric guitar. So let's get into how to add guitar effects to your recording. So to make your guitar video sound the way you want it and to apply guitar effects after the fact that you can change, you're going to need a VST or virtual studio technology. There are a number of guitar VSTs out there. The one I use and the one I'm familiar with is Bias FX and I'll have a link to that in the description. I've been using Bias FX as well as Reaper for around the past six months and it has allowed me to really make my guitar sounds sound really good and be able to change them on the fly so I can come up with the sound that sounds right for the song I'm playing. So let's get into how to use that. So first you'll need to have installed Bias FX into Reaper. I'm not going to walk through that right now, but if you search for that, I'm sure there are tutorials out there. So once you have Bias FX in Reaper, all you have to do to get it into the song, into the guitar track, is to go to the FX button on a track and then you'll see all of your VSTs here. And what I want is Bias FX, so I hit OK. And it opens up Bias FX. So we'll have something selected by default, but let's go ahead and change it to something else. Let's go to this Marshall, actually let's go to this Marshall JCM 900. I found this in the Tone Cloud where you can find other people's amp builds. So let's just kind of take off some of these effects. And now if we play back this track, it has an effect. So if I disable this effect here, and then I hit play again, it's back to the default, no effects applied. If I just enable this effect, so that's pretty cool, and you can change the effects on the fly. So let's say I want to try something else, so we're playing a song. So you can just change it to whatever you want, whenever you want. While it's playing, you can go through the different options, you can choose things, you can turn on and off effects, and it makes it super easy to edit and choose what you want and the effects you want on your guitar tracks. Another cool thing about this is that in Reaper and probably other DAWs as well, you can in live time hear the effects of the VST as they would sound. So if I play something now... You can see that it's actually playing back with the effects applied. So if I turn the effects off here, and then I play something, it doesn't have the effects applied. I believe that in Audacity you can actually use VSTs as well, but not real time. So you can't play something and hear how it will sound before you record. You have to record the guitar signal and after the fact you can process it. So if you're looking to use a VST, I highly recommend going to something like Reaper. So if your cover song or whatever you're recording is more complicated than just one guitar part, it's easy to set up multiple tracks. So all you have to do is just right click again, insert a new track, and choose your input. Make sure it's the right input for your amp or your audio interface. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're recording on and listening to the guitar track that you want to be. So you want to disable the record arm of the first one so it won't record when you play. 
and you just want to enable it and enable the monitoring on the track that you're about to record on. And right now this one won't have any effects on it because I haven't applied the effects. So you can just, you can choose something else even if you wanted to. You can go to bias FX again and then you can choose whatever you want. So let's say I wanted this one to be clean and the other track is distorted. Well, that's easy. You just go to choose something. So let's say, uh, what do we have here? Ambient clean. So now we have a totally different sound for this track than we do for the other track. So once we exit out of that, if you want to start recording something, if you don't want to hear the original track, you can just mute the original track so you don't have to hear that while you're recording. Or you can solo the track that you're trying to record on, which will make everything else be muted, and this one will stay on so you only hear this new track. So you can just start recording on this new track and record whatever you want. And it has a totally different sound than the other track that you recorded. So this combo of a DAW like Reaper and a BST like Bias FX is really amazing. It allows you to edit your guitar on the fly, make it sound the way you want it to sound, and not be limited by what your initial recording sounded like. I know this is a pretty simplified overview, there's a lot more you can go into talking about Reaper and about BSTs, but I just wanted to give a simple overview so you can get started recording and then you can kind of figure out more as you go along. So now I thought it might be interesting to briefly look at one of my existing projects that has a lot of recorded guitar tracks and kind of walk through some of it. Right now in Reaper, I've opened my For Whom the Bell Tolls project. There are a lot of guitar tracks in this video, so there's a lot of different things going on here, a little bit more complicated than the last thing I showed you. One thing worth mentioning in how I record my videos is that I usually record my rhythm guitar parts twice. And then I pan one to the left 100% and one to the right 100%. So you have one guitar part coming out of one ear, one side of the speaker, and one coming out of the other. This technique is really commonly used in metal guitar recording. So we can actually look at an example of this because I did this in For Whom the Bell Tolls. So I have a left and right track and we can listen to them right now, both together, one pan left and one pan right. Okay, so that's what it sounds like with both guitar tracks, one pan left, one pan right. And now let's hear what it would sound like if we only had one guitar track pan to the center. So it still sounds all right, but it doesn't sound quite as good as it does when you have two rhythm tracks, one pan left and one pan right. So just a small tip if you're getting started recording that might help you out recording guitar metal parts. So now that we've gotten the guitar recording taken care of, let's get started talking about video. So to get started talking about video, I need to first mention my camera. For a long time now, I've been using the Panasonic Lumix G7. I got this camera because it's one of the more affordable 4K cameras, and I usually record my videos in 4K, and then I edit them down to 1080p, which allows me to zoom in on parts of the video without losing quality. So now, in terms of how I actually edit my video, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. It's not the cheapest option, I think it's around $20 a month, but it has been really good for what I'm doing. It's easy to find help online because there's a lot of people using it, and it also works well for editing 4K video and doing more complicated things with video editing than other software. If you're just starting out and want something free as an option, you might want to just look at whatever is on your computer by default. When I first started out, I was using Windows Movie Maker, and while it's not as full-featured as Adobe Premiere Pro and probably won't handle 4K video, it worked for what it is. So now let's take a look at my editing process in Premiere Pro using the For Whom the Bell Tills video again. So as you can see here, we have a display of a preview of the video at the time. So right now you have me playing the intro rhythm part. If I click ahead here, there are two of me playing the other part in the intro, and you can kind of go through the timeline like that. Now you can see that there are a bunch of different audio tracks here. The audio tracks are the ones with the sound waves. The audio clips under the video are the clips from the actual video itself. Even though you won't be using the audio from the clip itself, it's useful to have both the audio from the video and from your final rendered track because you need to sync up the video and the audio. So this is where we get into combining the audio with the video. In Premiere Pro, there's actually a nice built-in feature which allows you to sync multiple audio tracks automatically. So to do that, you want to select the clip that you want to sync up, 
and then also select the audio that you want to sync it to. Once you have both selected, all you have to do is right click and go to synchronize and then you just hit OK. And if these audio clips are in different places and they need to be synchronized, the clips will move to the right place and they'll be automatically synchronized. This is really nice when it works, but it doesn't work all the time. It kind of depends on the audio levels in the video and how much stuff is going on in the actual song audio track. So if it doesn't end up working out automatically, you can also sync them up manually by looking at the audio waveforms. You can zoom in on them and try to match them up exactly so that you have the video and the audio matching completely. So once you have all of your video looking the way you want it to look and you've watched the preview and it looks good, you're ready to render the video. So to do this, all you have to do is go to File, then Export, then Media. Now once you're in your export screen, you can set up your settings here for how you want the video to look. I have a default YouTube one that I found online and it basically just uses 1080p and uses maximum render quality. And you want to make sure your start is actually at the start of the video so you get the whole thing, you don't have to render it twice and then you just hit export. The rendering process may take a little bit of time depending on how long the video is and how many clips you have, but once it's done, you'll have your full video and all the audio ready to go and ready to upload to YouTube. So I hope this gave you some insight into my recording process, and I hope that if you're interested in starting recording videos of your own, this gives you a good starting point. But if you don't have any of this equipment, if you don't have an audio interface, you don't have a nice camera, you can't buy Adobe Premiere Pro, don't let that hold you back. You can make a video with what you have right now. Although it won't be the best sound or video quality, you can record a guitar video with your phone while you sit next to your amp and play, and record the audio through your phone as well. Then when you're able to, you can get an audio interface or a better camera and upgrade your whole setup. But don't let your current equipment hold you back from doing what you're excited about. If you're excited about recording yourself playing guitar, go ahead and start right now. You can also use free programs like Audacity, Windows Movie Maker, and still make a really good video. If you have any questions about my recording process, feel free to leave a comment. Also, if you have a very different recording process from me, please leave that in a comment as well. I'd be interested in hearing about it. I'll have links in the description to pretty much everything I mentioned in this video. I wish you the best of luck in recording your own guitar videos, and I'll see you in the next video.